The young stag was a force beyond belief. I was there in the Battle of the Den, where the forces of the king and usurper met. I saw his fury. Less a man and more a beast, he put down all who faced his hammer. Though when Rhaegar fell, I was not there to see it. We fought bravely. We followed our oaths. But in the end, my son Arthur died anyway. Slain by Stark or Reed, I do not know, at the Tower of Joy. With both my brother and I locked in chains deep in the dungeons of King Landing. Word of this did not come to me until I had played Robert's price and bent the knee on the king's road back to Starfall. Elise Ulrich still lives, and Ashara too, though her grief was beyond even my own. When I arrived at Starfall, I was met by Howland Reed, who had separated from the Stark's honor guard to return the body of Eddard to the north, as my son had slain him before death. The Northman was honest, making clear to my whole court with not but two of his guards that he had killed my son and at the instructions of Eddard before he died, to return Dawn to my family. If not for honor, I would have killed him there for it. But he did well in the memory of his dead. As to mine, what could I do? Ulrich, of course, demanded we throw the Lord of Reed from the highest tower, but I stayed his hand. It is time for forgiveness and a new start. How Stain will remember the Usurper's War, as will I until my dying day. This is the second part of a House Dane roleplay Game of Thrones series. You need to get a little bit closer with Lady Delona. She's a she's a harsh woman, but given we have married our son to her daughter, I think we need to get her to know better. So we're gonna try and befriend her. We'll invite her to a board game to start off with. Lady Delona takes her seat opposite me. We've invited her to, to Starfall. Our little game of Parshi is about to begin, and a, with a confident grin tells me exactly how confident my acquaintance is. She goes first, opening with a variety of cunning feints and ploys. We're neck and neck, and neither of us are even close to victory. Uh, if only public speaking was as easy as beating you and Pashi. We're going to talk shit. You have easy tells. Our match marches on, Delone continuing with a competent play and a clever witticism. Naturally, my techniques cunningly foil my opponent. She is starting to win, though neither of us is even close to victory. Don't feel too bad. Even Land the Clever couldn't follow my moves. This bitch got an ego. Yeah, she's rude, fickle, and deceitful. We really don't like her, but... We, uh, we are bonded by blood now. Our matches marches on. She continues with a bland, miscalculated set of moves. Naturally, my techniques foil her. We're in the lead. Why are numbers always as hard? Pashi needs you to think so far ahead, and I just can't. The, the ego's gone. There's no greater disappointment than that which I feel when staring at the tokens in this board. The arrangement clearly dictates that I've been bested. With the seven who are one as my witness, I did all I could. My palms begin sweaty. My knees weak. I'm spaghetti, as I realize the best of my ability is simply not enough to beat Delone. Well, we were always doing this just to get in her good graces, so we'll be honorable in defeat. And she didn't like that. She didn't respect that. <laughs> Fuck. Well, that was a complete waste of time and went poorly, but oh well. Our attempts to get in the good graces of the woman from God's grace uh, failed. So let's go ahead and try and befriend uh, Dorn instead, our leash. He's a more reasonable man. Also deceitful, but... He at least has to deal with us, because we're one of his major vassals. We will upgrade our harvesters. We'll say that uh, in order to cope with the death of his son, Arthur, uh, he picked up beekeeping as a hobby and has turned it into a full business now for the capital. So we'll put our time and energy into our beekeeping. Keeps us away from court and from our, from our children. We will have one more person to betroth, which is our second daughter, Illyria. Jerome brought my daughter Illyria to the market today. Illyria was to hand out alms to the poor and needy, to learn about charity and a ruler's plight to the less fortunate. She refuses to give a single corn to anyone, Jerome exclaims. Everyone we met were either undeserving or beneath her. In the end, she kept the gold. <laughs> Fuck. Illyria seems to have developed an egotistical streak. We, we'd probably have an ego too. Yeah, all right, let's teach her good values as a noble. That's the right, girl. You're better than them. As I'm walking into the kitchens, I see a skinny armed servant panicking, the whole barrel of my precious Dornish red wine pooling around his pee feet. A whole barrel wasted, all because the servant tried to carry it by himself. He looks up and sees me standing in the doorway, his face suddenly alight with not only dismay, but fear as well. The other servants have gone quiet in my presence as well. They are waiting to see how I react. We are just and honorable, so we'll tell him to clean it up. We'll be pissed, but we wouldn't be brutal. Wasting our goddamn wine. It's worth more than his life. I tell you that. Harris, a hedge knight, has arrived at my court. 
He has requested permission to rest in my keep for a short while before he resumes his travels. In return, he has offered me a service for the duration of his stay. Harris Highbow. He's from a noble family, I think. The reindeer falls before the sword. I tasked Harris with a rather simple matter, overseeing some of my small folk while they completed some manual labor I had levied them for. Harris didn't oversee them, but with a heavier hand than might be necessary. Our son will fucking love him. Our son would absolutely love him. Yeah, wrathful, vengeful, and patient. Our son will probably end up befriending him. They're uh, cut from the same cloth. Harris has spent the day training in the courtyard, sparring with a few of my household guards. Harris and Ulrich have spent the day in deep co Of course they fucking did. I fucking called it. Deep conversation with one another, discussing the finer points of strategy and analyzing historical battles. I fucking called that. Like I said, they're, they're gonna like each other. The time has come at last for Harris to return to the hedges from whence he came. Before leaving, he comes before you and offers his sincere thanks for your hospitality, asking if he can be of any further service prior to his departure. Let's uh, let's bring him on. We'll make him we'll make him one of our knights. We'll give him a position. I'm sure our son would 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 be asking for that. We'll make him a sworn shield. After learning that Lord Paramount Doran would be guesting at a manor in a village of Rocktop, I realized that it would be the perfect occasion to meet with him. When the time came, I was seated next to him for the entirety of dinner, but I found myself incapable of saying anything interesting. Well, we we can't befriend him because. We're not an interesting human being. That's unfortunate. What well, started as an ordinary feast became an exceptional one thanks to the presence of Lord Doran. Oh, he came. God damn. We spoke all evening about all manner of subjects, and as things would have it, we seemed to have a lot in common. I had such a good time with him. Oh, we're actually managing to befriend him. We stopped trying to befriend him, and now we're doing it. It's, it's about right. We'll try and befriend Lord Ormont of Euronwood. We are known for our dedication to the faith. We take a squire. Yeah, we'll take a square. We'll take on Arthur Red Steel. Labor over courage. We'll upgrade the beehives. Mead makers. Oh, we're going to start to make our own mead. Hell yeah. Dorn is obviously known for their wine, but perhaps Dornish mead will reach some acclaim. As a squire, Arthur, is, is my responsibility to train them in the ways of knighthood. I've decided to practice a particular skill with them today, but I need to select one. We're not good with strategy, but we're a very good fighter. So let's teach them swordsmanship. Arv and I are sparring with practice swords today. After all, a knight is only as good as their swordsmanship. During our training session, Arthur could not grasp the techniques I was demonstrating. They seemed to struggle with other drills as well. We were invited to a grand tourney at Storm's End. Absolutely. We will go. With the children at court, Brain has taken the wooden warrior of a younger boy and thrown it into a nearby cave. My daughter was there and saw it all happen. Elyria got hold of the household guards and forced Brain to go into the cave. Brain's terrified screams could be heard. Our daughter's a bit of an asshole, isn't she? Could be heard for minutes before emerging with a toy. It seems that when Illyria thinks something, uh, the right thing to do, she won't stop before she makes it happen. She's stubborn. Well, I at last reach the tourney grounds. I spare a moment to take in the sights and sounds. Blast the trumpets proclaim the imminent start of the qualification rounds. Yeah, wonderful. We'll be able to teach our squire here as well. We'll do some swordsmanship while we uh, prepare for our first joust. And he's done very poorly again. Damn. Despite my best efforts, I was defeated in the preliminary rounds and eliminated from the tourney early. An outcome that will impress no one. Oberyn is fighting Lord John Cunningham. Ooh, that'd be a really fun battle to watch. Lord John has prevailed against Prince Oberyn. They were both great warriors, to be fair. After learning the Lord Ormond will be attending the dance in the village of the Boyle, I decided it would be a perfect occasion to pass by to ensure I got some free time uh, with him. The ball was exquisite, and Lord Ormond was put on a fine show. Afterward, I told him how impressed I was and got to talking. By the time I left, I felt as though we had known each other for a lifetime already. Good. We have befriended the other uh, really major vassal in Dorne. Ariana Dane. Let's find her a good uh, a good educator. We can do it ourselves. Let's, uh, let's, let's directly administer our, our daughter's tutelage. Or granddaughter's tutelage, rather. Arthur, I swear to God. We'll go riding. Let's do this easy. You can't fuck up riding. Come on. During the training session, Arthur demonstrated a good bond with his horse. It seems as though he's uh, they have keenly. It was impressive how determined they were in uh, mastering today's tactics. All right. Well, he can ride a horse. Good. That's something. Do they not have lands? No, they don't have lands. They're from a noble house, but very minor. They've lost their titles long ago. If he's competent enough, perhaps we'll give him a holding when he's older. All right. We're going to teach you chivalry. You can't fuck that up either. Come on. Demonstrated excellent chivalrous behavior. It was very pleasing to see how they embraced the concepts I taught. All right, well, he's not clearly good with sword fighting. That's relevant, right? But he's, he's not a bad lad. He's not a bad squire. Perhaps we misjudged him. He's got other redeeming characteristics. He just can't hold a sword to save his life. He's a good lad. He's a good lad. Well, we're going to put a lot more work into training him. Let's, let's try swordsmanship again. Arthur, come on. You've got this. 
During our training session, Arthur demonstrated quick thinking, a martial prowess with his practice sword. It was impressive seeing how determined they were to master today's tactics. Good. As far as showing decent understanding of knighthood, they are improving, but still have some ways to go. If we train him to be a good knight, he'll be a loyal servant of our son when he comes of age. Or, uh, not when he comes of age. When he rules. When we, when we go to the seven. The wilderness is calling out to me. It's been too long since I last haunted, as after the death of our son. Out there in the hills of Starfall, there are plenty of sly foxes. One should would do well on my dinner table tonight. Something is missing though. Are my hunting spirits too old and dull? Or is it a companion I lack? I shall make sure to prepare well. A hunting dog. Yeah, I, a hunting dog would be a good idea. We're getting older. It'd be nice to have a companion that we can rely on. As I pet the dog on the head, he happily wags his tail. What name would suit him? We're going hunting, lad. You're going to learn to ride and you're going to fucking like it. He showed, uh, good. Demonstrated a good bond with his horse. Good. He, he did well in the hunt. You would think as a creature from myth, perhaps a god disguised in animal form, the largest stag I had ever seen. Still imposing sight, lying dead before me. My daughter, Lyria, seems to be enjoying our latest feast. She is 14 now. Ah, they grow up quick. She got along quite well with everyone she spoke to, even the adult guests. Gregarious. Nice. She's an arrogant, stubborn, vengeful Gregarious. So, a typical noble in Game of Thrones, really. You son of a bitch. If you don't get this fucking sword form, I swear to God. And he's still struggling. He's really not good of a sword, is he? What's our fucking son up to these days? I don't, I don't trust him. Still has only had that one daughter. It appears that, like, he, he literally fucked his wife once, and then he's like, Yeah, I'm good. I go back to screwing men. I was shocked when I caught my granddaughter Ariane trying to steal from a travel chest of the visiting Lord Alistair, our brother. She blamed a game, uh, blamed a game another child had invented. But I can tell she is lying. We can't respect a deceitful person. Be honest and you will see others open to you. We've inherited the Lordship of Astromine and two other titles. Right, so we inherited the whole north. The cadet branch of our family died out. High Hermitage. That's where the other branch of the um, the Danes are in the actual lore. Like that's that High Hermitage is where the the cadet branch is at. So we'll grant that to another member of our dynasty, and then I think Astromini and the Gateway. I'm going to give to the Red Steels. They've shown themselves to be capable and loyal. We like Arthur. I mean, we we've we've raised him as our squire for years now. His uncle is a head of the Council Guard, uh, House Guard. He's a good man. The Red Steels are a family of good bearing. Astromine, we will give. To rule in red steel. The gateway, we will give to some random stone Dornish culture uh, person. I can't think of anyone else we'd really grant that to, so we'll do that. Which will be Lord Perrin of the Fields of Grass. High Hermitage, we will keep for ourselves. And if Arthur shows himself to be capable enough when he grows older, or if our son has multiple children to inherit, we will grant it to them. We can find a betrothal too. I feel at this point we probably view him as like a almost like another son. With Arthur having died, our second son, and becoming a Kingsguard when we were younger, I think in many ways we'd probably treat Arthur like a like an adopted son in some ways. So we'll need to find him a good wife too. But only if he's capable. If he proves to be an O for to lack chivalry, we will we will let him go. Our daughter came of age, Illyria. A charismatic negotiator. Gregarious, vengeful, stubborn, and arrogant. Actually, the Euronwood family would be even better. Yeah, we'll betroth them. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. He's the heir, and then yeah, he's the heir. So this will this will he will one day rule in Ronwood, which is a great family for us to have ties to. We'll betroth them. It's a very good political marriage, and we're already good friends with his grandfather. Let's go ahead and do a large sketch in our metery. I was happily soaking in bathhouse, sharing deep reflections and salacious jokes with Lord Paramount Doran. Nice. As I feel all tension in my body, I realize it's not the warm water but loosening my muscles. I'm generally having fun, and it's all because of Doran's company. We've befriended Lord Paramount Doran. Oh, wow, that's huge. He's, he's a murderer and an adulterer, but he is our leash. Robert did marry Cersei, too. He had seven children. Hell yeah. Arthur has come of age. He's proved himself after much toil and time to be capable. And we will formally knight him. Sir Arthur, Red Steel, not the most capable, but he has a good heart. And as I promised, we will grant him the ancestral home of our cadet branch, and we will gift him High Hermitage. We did make the Red Steels pretty strong in our territories, but I'm sure it's fine. All right, we need to sit down with our son and have a talk. Obviously, we, we know he's not straight, but we need to have a talk about him making more heirs, because my god, that should be an event chain. All right, tell you what, son, I've got a deal for you. You are a good warrior, but 
but I need a fucking grandson. So here's the deal. I will get you knighthood. I will knight you. But you have to go fuck your wife. Okay? That's the requirement here. This is a fair deal. You'll be a knight. You'll have prestige. You'll have honor. But you need to go fuck your wife. My relative Ulrich has been knighted. My granddaughter Ariane has been impressed with one of the household knights for a very long time. After finally meeting in person, she has been repeating the warrior's words to herself. Give others their due and you will receive your own in turn. She became generous. Oh, we can make her diligent though. She must be taught that hard work always produces results. I'm gonna do it. We're gonna take the stress. Jesus Christ, this is a good heir. We might inherit with her too. Diligent, brave, impatient, and honest. God damn. My ward Ariana has come of age and it is time she left my care. With sufficient tutelage, even a child that has displayed little natural inclination towards diplomatic influence such as Ariane can come to understand it. Good. Jesus fucking Christ, man. I take it back. Ulrich, don't fuck your wife. I'm fine with my granddaughter. She is an absolute beast. Diligent, brave, impatient, honest, and a gray eminence. Whew. We need to get her a good husband. She is very capable. Damn it, this will be difficult. We need to find a good husband for our granddaughter. Who is gonna actually be willing to do this? No, we're not. Oh, we can do a Mart's Hell? Oh, that is perfect. Darius Martel. He is a bastard of Oberyn? Oh, fuck yeah. Sir Darius Sand, a compassionate, ambitious, just cynical knight. A bastard of Prince Oberyn who would be willing to marry our granddaughter with a matrilineal marriage. Yeah, you know we gotta do that. He's already a knight, so we won't need to train him either. Let's work on befriending him. That'd be worthwhile. 